Hi, this is uh, my uh, second lecture uh, in the topic uh, called uh, uh, transformations and uh, uh, weighting to correct uh, model in adequacy. Uh, in simple linear regression model or in the multiple linear regression model, uh, we make some basic uh, assumptions uh, on the regression model like uh, we assume that the error terms uh, have uh, mean 0, constant variance and they are uncorrelated and also we assume that uh, the error terms uh, follow uh, normal distribution. Now, a given a set of data, uh, how do you know the uh, given data uh, follow uh, or they satisfy uh, the basic assumption we made uh, for uh, regression fitting. So, uh, to check whether your data satisfy the basic, uh, basic assumption or not, uh, we have learned several techniques in, in the module called uh, model adequacy checking. And uh, in this regard, uh, the residual plot is an effective uh, uh, technique to test uh, whether uh, the model assumptions are uh, satisfied or not. So, what you do there is that you know you, you fit a simple linear regression model and then you find the residuals and you plot residuals against the uh, estimated response. So, if you see that the residuals are sort of scattered or centered about the line E equal to 0, uh, then, uh, uh, then the model is satisfactory and then you can assume that uh, the constant variant variance assumption is correct. But if you see uh, from the scatter plot, uh, from the residual plot that uh, the residuals are sort of the residual fit uh, is similar to say uh, um, outward open funnel or inward open funnel. That means, the um, uh, constant variance assumption is not true and similarly, if your residual plot uh, is uh, is a like a, 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 is similar to say double bow, then also you know uh, the constant variance assumption uh, is not correct. So, uh, so if you if you if you have a data x i and y i uh, and and you know how to check whether data uh, satisfy the basic assumptions or not. Uh, suppose your data does not satisfy uh, the basic assumption we made. Uh, in the linear regression fit, uh, then what we do in the current module or in the current topic is that uh, we learn here uh, what to do in this situation when, when the uh, given data does not satisfy uh, the basic assumptions. Okay. So, uh, we talked about two techniques in the previous class. And uh, here is the content of this uh, topic uh, called variance uh, stabilizing transformation. So, you uh, we take some transformation on the response variable to, uh, to correct the uh, non constant uh, variance assumption. Um, and uh, also, we talked about transformations to uh, linearize the model and we are left with uh, analytic analytical math methods to select a transformation and uh, generalized and weighted least square. So, today uh, we will be talking about uh, this uh, generalized and uh, weighted least square technique. Okay, first, let me talk with uh, talk about uh, uh, weighted uh, 
least square. Okay, so uh, linear regression model with non constant variance can be fit it by the method of weighted least square. Okay. So, uh, if you can recall that uh, uh, for the for simple linear regression model, the model is y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus epsilon. So, what you do uh, to estimate uh, what is the ordinary least square? So, we are talking about uh, weighted least square here. Uh, the ordinary least square is to uh, is a technique to estimate this uh, regression coefficient and there we estimate the regression coefficient beta naught and beta 1 by minimizing this quantity s equal to summation y i minus beta naught minus beta 1 x i whole square. So, this is the observed response and this is the fitted response and and this quantity is the residual. So, this is nothing but the ith residual e i square. Okay. So, in the ordinary least square technique, we minimize this quantity, we minimize the difference between the original response value and the estimated response value. Uh, to estimate uh, this regression coefficients. Now, what here we do is, here what we do is that uh, instead of minimizing this qu quantity, uh, we minimize uh, this is called uh, for weighted least square the weighted least square function is just to multiply by w y. So, w y is the weight uh, given to the ith observation and uh, here w i is proportional to uh, 1 by sigma i square. So, see here we are talking about a model with non constant variance that means, y i is coming from a population with variance sigma i square. Okay. So, uh, w i is proportional to 1 by sigma i square and then you find the normal equation. So, you have to estimate beta naught and beta 1 by using weighted least square. So, the normal equations are partial derivative of S with respect to beta naught equal to 0. This gives uh, summation w i y i equal to beta naught hat summation w i plus 
beta 1 hat summation w i x i. So, this is the first normal equation and the second normal equation is obtained by uh, differentiating this weighted least square function s with respect to beta 1 equal to 0. This gives summation w i y i x i equal to beta naught hat summation w i x i plus beta 1 hat summation w i x i square. So, you have two normal equations and two unknown beta naught and beta 1. By solving these two equations, you will uh, get an estimate of the regression coefficients beta naught and beta 1 hat, beta naught and beta 1. Now, I did not say anything about why the weight is proportional to 1 by sigma i square and the other concern here is that see you are given just uh, data set like x i y i for i equal to 1 to n nothing else. So, you do not know what is this sigma i square for your given set of data. Okay. So, I will come back to this point the first of all why this weight is proportional to 1 by sigma i square and how to get this sigma i square. So, I just you know um, uh, gave an idea of what is uh, uh, weighted least square. So, this is uh, very similar to the uh, ordinary least square, but here we are giving weight w i to the ith observation and that w i is proportional to uh, 1 by sigma i square, but how do I get this sigma i square and why it is uh, why this weight is proportional to 1 by sigma i square that uh, I am going to uh, tell uh, in this class only. Okay. Well, so uh, now I uh, need some uh, prerequisite uh, to talk about uh, a generalized least square. So, first one is uh, called Gauss Markov theorem. So, this theorem says that for a regression model y equal to x beta plus epsilon. So, this is a multiple linear regression model with expectation of epsilon equal to 0 and variance of epsilon equal to sigma square i. That means, uh, it satisfies the basic assumption of multiple linear regression model, uh, it is constant variance and the expectation is 0 and it a, and they are uncorrelated. You can see the uh, covariance terms are all equal to 0 because this is the identity matrix. Okay. Uh, for regression model with this, the least square estimate are unbiased and have minimum variance when compared with with all other unbiased estimator that are 
linear combination of the response values y i s. Okay, so, what this Gauss Markov theorem says is that uh, for the multiple linear regression model satisfying the basic assumption. So, we, we apply the ordinary least square technique here and we know uh, the estimate, uh, we know that beta, beta hat uh, using a least square estimate beta hat is equal to x prime x inverse x prime y. So, what this Gauss Markov theorem says that the estimator obtained by least square estimate this is unbiased and it has the minimum variance compared to all other unbiased estimator uh, which are linear in y. So, uh, so, the estimator obtained by using least square technique is the best among all linear unbiased estimator. So, so this, uh, this least square estimators are best linear unbiased estimator, these are called uh, uh, blue. So, this is what the Gauss Markov theorem is and let me talk a uh, little bit about, uh, uh, I hope that you know uh, about positive definite matrix. Uh, still I will recall it. Uh, so, a matrix uh, n cross n matrix m is positive definite if z prime m z is strictly greater than 0 for all non-zero vectors z belongs to r to the power of n. Okay. So, uh, to make this definition clear, I will give some example of positive definite matrix. So, example 1, uh, this is basically I 2, 0, 1, 1, sorry 1 0 0 1 consider this matrix. So, this matrix is positive definite because you consider z equal to say z naught z 1 then z prime m z call this matrix m equal to z naught square plus z 1 square and this is strictly greater than 0 because uh, z 1 sorry z naught and z 1 they are real and at least one of them is positive. Okay, so, this is a positive definite matrix. So, you know this is uh, uh, similarly you can prove that I n uh, identity matrix of order n this is also positive definite. Let me give one more example. Example 2 consider this matrix which is equal to 2 minus 1 0 minus 1 
2 minus 1 0 minus 1 2. So, this is a matrix uh, involving some negative entry, uh, but this is positive definite because uh, you take a z, z equal to say z 1, z 2, z 3. So, it is basically it is from R 3, then you can check that z prime m z is equal to z 1 square plus z 1 minus z 2 square plus z 2 minus z 3 square plus z 3 square. And this is strictly greater than 0 because of the fact that all this z 1, z 2, z 3 they are real and at least one of them is positive. So, you may think that you know uh, uh, that if there are some positive terms in the matrix then it is positive definite. I just give one more example say uh, example 3 uh, which is not positive definite. Uh, so, take this matrix M all positive terms 1, 2, 2, 1, but this is not positive definite because if you take z non 0 say 1 minus 1, then you can check that 1 minus 1, 1, 2, 2, 1, 1 minus 1 this is equal to minus 2 which is less than 0. Well, so for uh, so this is uh, this is an example of a matrix which is not uh, positive definite. For a huge class of example covariance matrix matrices are positive definite. In fact, every positive definite matrix is covariance matrix of some multivariate probability distribution. Okay. So, next I uh, will move to uh, uh, the generalized uh, least square thing. Uh, generalized least square. Okay. So, here uh, what we will do is that we will develop uh, weighted least square for multiple regression model. Okay, so, uh, you first uh, <coughs> recall the multiple uh, linear regression model. Uh, so, you consider the same model say y equal to x beta plus 
epsilon with expectation of epsilon is equal to 0 and variance of epsilon is equal to v into sigma square and this one this v into sigma square cannot be written as i sigma square. So, this is important because whatever we have done uh, before uh, for the multiple linear regression model, we have assumed that expectation of E equal to 0 and variance of E is equal to sigma square i. So, sigma square i means here uh, the constant variance assumption is true. That means, you know all the um, um, I mean variance of epsilon i is equal to sigma square for all i and and they are uncorrelated. That is why you can see here the uh, uh, off diagonal elements are uh, 0 here, but here this is not true. So, this v is so this v is uh, this is the uh, covariance covariance ma matrix and here v is positive definite. Okay. So, here uh, now uh, we are trying to fit a multiple linear regression model y equal to x beta plus epsilon, where expectation of epsilon is equal to 0 and, but the constant variant assumption is not true. Here, um, the variance of epsilon is equal to v into sigma square. Uh, that means, uh, the variance uh, there, there, I mean, the, there exist inequality in variances, and also the epsilon i's are not necessarily they are uncorrelated. They are correlated here. That's why you can see that here v is v v is a positive definite matrix, and it it involves some non-zero um, of diagonal terms. Okay. So, this happens this happens when observations y have unequal variances and or observations are correlated. Okay, so, here is the violation of the basic assumption in the multiple linear regression model we we assumed before. So, uh, now in either case the condition of of Gauss Markov theorem are conditions of Gauss Markov theorems are violated so beta hat uh, which is equal to x prime x inverse x prime y 
which is this is the estimator of beta using the ordinary least square estimator is not the best linear unbiased estimator. Okay. Now, what we will do here is that uh, in this situation also it is possible to find blue of beta best linear unbiased estimator of beta for arbitrary positive definite v by suitable linear transformation on the model. Okay, so, what we do is that we we have this model at this moment multiple linear regression model y equal to x beta plus epsilon. Now, we will take a linear transformation on this model we multiply this model by g And now note that what is the variance of, so this is the transform model now. So, the variance of g epsilon, I mean we have you, you have to choose uh, the right g of course. So, how do you choo choose this g uh, is the variance of g epsilon is equal to sigma square g v g prime okay because because the variance of epsilon is equal to v sigma square. Okay. So, what we are doing here is that you are given the data x y. So, x y the given data does not satisfy the model assumption it has non constant variance and then we transform this data to g x g y. Now, our problem is to choose a correct g such that this quantity is identity. So, you want to make you have to choose g in such a way such that g v g prime is equal to identity. So, therefore, if we choose g such that g v g prime is equal to i, then the transform data, then the transformed data satisfy Gauss Markov conditions. And the blue best linear unbiased 
estimator of beta is obtained by ordinary least square estimator of transformed data. Okay, so, uh, my original data does not satisfy the basic assumption, uh, it, it has uh, uh, inequality invariances and they are not, uh, they are correlated. So, it, we transform the data to g x and g y uh, and we have to choose this g in such a way that uh, the transform error has variance sigma square i. Well, so once we have the transform, uh, now since uh, the transform error has variance sigma square i, so it satisfies the Gauss Markov theorem, satisfy the conditions of Gauss Markov theorem and that is why the blue of b can be obtained by ordinary least square estimator of transform data. Okay. So, here this g b g prime equal to i which is equivalent to v equal to or v inverse is equal to g prime g and uh, and which is equivalent to v equal to g inverse g prime inverse. Okay. So, now what is the least square? So, you have to choose a g in such a way that v equal to g inverse g prime inverse. Okay. Well, now if we apply the ordinary least square estimator on the transform data, what we will get is that we will get beta hat equal to x prime g prime g x inverse x prime g g y. How we got this thing? Because see uh, in case of ordinary least square estimator beta hat is equal to x prime x inverse x prime y. So, what I am doing here is that you just uh, replace x by g x and y by g y, because uh, we are working on the transform data g x and g y. So, you put you replace this x by g x, you will get this formula and the variance of and finally, this can be also written as uh, let me write here, this can be also written as in terms of v, I can write that this is equal to x prime v inverse x inverse x prime v inverse y. Okay. So, this is the blue obtained using uh, generalized least square technique and the variance of beta hat is equal to sigma square x prime g prime g x inverse. This is same as the before uh, we had you know in case of ordinary least square we had a variance of beta hat 
is equal to sigma square x prime x inverse. So, what you are doing here what we are doing here is that we are just replacing x by g x and in terms of v this can be written as sigma square x prime v inverse x inverse. Okay, so, so this one is the uh, generalized least square estimator of regression coefficient and here is the variance. Now, still I did not talk how to get this g. I mean, uh, we have v and then we have to choose g such that g v g prime is equal to identity matrix, okay, where we know that v is a positive definite matrix. Well, so, uh, we have to choose g such that such that v inverse is equal to g g prime g okay well so v is a positive definite matrix so it is always possible to find a symmetric g by using the orthogonal decomposition of positive definite phi. So, we can uh, a positive definite matrix v can be decom can be written as u prime capital lambda inverse u, where capital lambda is the diagonal matrix of eigenvalues and u is the matrix of eigenvectors. Okay, so, uh, what we want is that, well, so, V is a positive definite matrix that we know. From there, we can uh, and then V can be decomposed in this way. Now, we want to write, we want to find G, right. So, this implies v inverse is equal to u inverse capital lambda u prime inverse and I want to write this v inverse as g prime g then the choice for g is g equal to capital lambda half u prime inverse. Okay, so, this is the choice for uh, for g. Well, so, uh, what we have learned here is that if your given data uh, does not satisfy the basic assumption of constant variance, uh, if there are inequality in the variances and also if the errors are correlated or observations are correlated, then uh, we'll, uh, we have I mean then uh, variance of epsilon is uh, cannot be written as sigma square into i, it is v into sigma square where v is a 
positive definite matrix. And then from that V, we can find a G such that if you take the transformation I just talked about here, if you take the transformation then uh, transformation like G y equal to G x beta plus G epsilon, then you work on the transform data and then the ordinary least square, the transform data now satisfy all the basic assumptions and then you can apply um, ordinary least square technique on the transform data. Okay. So, this is what the generalized least square technique is and now uh, we will show how uh, how this generalized least square, I mean how we can get weighted least square technique as a particular case of a generalized least square. Okay. So, we already know what is generalized least square and an important special case, important case is weighted least square. Okay. So, uh, at the beginning I talked about weighted least square and then I said that instead of I mean we have to find the regression coefficient by minimizing this uh, w i e i square where w i is proportional to 1 by sigma square and then I said that you know I will explain this uh, why this weight is proportional to 1 by sigma square. So, now we know generalized least square and as a particular case uh, weighted least square is a particular case of generalized least square. So, here observations are uncorrelated and have unequal variance. So, uncorrelated means the off diagonal elements are 0. So, variance of epsilon you can take this as sigma square 0, 0, 0. These are the covariance term, all the covariances are 0 because it is uncorrelated 0 sigma 2 square zero zero sigma n square. So this is the variance covariance matrix. Well so this is equal to my V and I want to find a G such that V inverse is equal to G prime G. And here it is easy you can very easily find a G such that V inverse is G prime G. Okay. Uh, you can check that the choice of G is equal to just V to the power of minus half. Okay. So, this is my V. So, this is equal to 1 by sigma 1 0 0 0 0 1 by sigma 2 right. So, if you choose this g you can check that v inverse is g prime g right and this one is nothing but diagonal 1 by sigma 1 1 by sigma 2 1 by sigma n. Okay. Well, so now my beta hat is equal to we know that beta hat is equal to 
x prime v inverse a x inverse x prime v inverse y okay. and if we write my weight is equal to v inverse then this is nothing but x prime w x inverse x prime w y and variance of beta hat is equal to x prime v inverse x inverse which is equal to x prime w x inverse. Okay. So, this explain uh, this explain. So, this is the weight we are talk, talk, talking about in the in the weighted the, the in the weighted least square the weight is nothing but this v inverse uh, then whereas v is this matrix and then it is clear that y w i is proportional to 1 by sigma i square. So, I explained this part, but still I need to explain one more thing. Uh, so, I explained why this weight w i is proportional to 1 by sigma i square, but uh, I will explain in, in my next class uh, how to get this sigma i square, because see you are just given a set of observations or, or a data set x i o i i and from that data you identified that some of the basic assumptions like constant variance and normality assumptions are violated and to correct uh, those assumption what you do is that you are going for weighted least square. Now, to apply weighted least square you need to know sigma i squares. right? So, uh, in the next class, uh, but sigma, sigma i squares are of course, not given. So, in the next class I will take an example, uh, which ex the example gives you uh, just a set of observation x i and y i and then uh, we will first realize that for that observation the some basic operations are violated. And uh, then we will try to apply uh, weighted least square estimated to correct that model. And uh, of course, for that we need to find the sigma i square and uh, we will talk about how to find sigma i squares in the next, next lecture. Thank you very much. <laughs>